Hey everyone, welcome. In today's video, I want to show you how I use Simon Hurley's brand new release, the Flowering Mandala, both a stamp and stencil set to create this beautiful card. So off we go. All right, first of all, hi everybody, and thank you so much, Simon, for choosing me to um, play with your stamps here a little bit before uh, they were released. I was really excited that you uh, invited me. And so we're going to be using the Flowering Mandala. It's a two-piece stamp set. And then there's a coordinating uh, layering stencil to go with it to help you color that mandala in. Makes it so easy. And so um, here's the... Here's the skew. You can get these, pick these up from Ranger. My link's in the description below. So we're going to go ahead and get out the stamp set, the uh, Flowering Mandela stamp, and it is a red rubber stamp, and the center does come out. So I'm going to pull it off, and here's the center. And it's attached a little bit when you first get it, but um, it'll, it'll go right back in. I did find that I needed to figure out where where to put it back so that it would stamp evenly um but it's <laughs> it doesn't necessarily matter because it's you know the sides are symmetrical so we're going to get out my misty stamping platform here and i'm going to grab a piece of simon hurley stark white cardstock to begin with and i'm looking around for it where the heck did i put it okay here it is i have i cut it all up just to save myself time because I only use it for card fronts. I wouldn't use it for a card base. I use the cheap stuff for my card bases. But uh, this is the most beautiful card stock to blend on, particularly if you're using Simon's inks. They were like a married, not a married couple, best friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, married couples can be a little weird sometimes. So I'm just straightening out my little piece of uh, rubbery stuff there. And I'm going to lay the stamp where I want it. And I'm going to be cutting this out. And, and I mean, you could put it on a 6 by 6 square card, but, you know, we don't do those a lot in the U.S. I know that um, my friends across the pond and elsewhere do like to make big, big cards, but we said, tend to stick to these um, 4 and a half or 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half cards. So I've got some clear embossing powder here, and I'm going to use my uh, VersaFine Clair to stamp down. But first I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my Rabbit Hole Designs little anti-static powder brush. Um, because when you're coloring and you get some of that um, powder on your paper, it doesn't your coloring doesn't come through. So I want to make sure that I only get embossing powder on my paper, on the ink and not the paper. So I'm going to make several stamps of this. I want it nice and dark, and I want the pigment real heavy on there to be able to grab up all that embossing powder. And I'm going to grab my little pushy tool. This is my chunky tool. I think right now it's got Valentine hearts in it. <laughs> I don't eat those, so they're, they're not in danger of coming out of there anytime soon. I'll fill it with jelly beans eventually. <laughs> I don't need those either, so, well, unless they're Jelly Belly brand. I particularly like the buttered popcorn. I know some people would find that gross, but I like them, <laughs> so there's that. And I'm not caring about the positioning of this mandala. It's fine where it is. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical straight up and down. And let's see here. Let me see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm going to give it one more go where I didn't get my ink heavy enough. And just press specifically in those spots. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Sorry about that goofy reference happen to be a big happy Gilmore fan <laughs> or anything funny anyway I'll go ahead and pull that out and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my clear embossing powder over the top and I want to make sure I get it on there really well that's why I like this big container for my clear embossing powder I'm gonna tap it off really well too with just some dental gentle taps I don't want to tap the whole thing away 
and then I'll go ahead and turn on my heat tool and get ready to heat emboss this. Yep, making sure it's hot. All right, there we go. And just a simple process to heat emboss it. It just really gives it, makes it pop, especially if you're gonna cover it with ink. Uh, so, it, I mean, it takes a minute and, you know, you want to, generally I would probably speed this up, but I didn't. I want to tell you, I already uploaded this video and I had completely forgotten to edit it. I've forgotten to do my voiceover. Luckily, one of my friends said, hey, did you, are you having problems with your sound? I went, no, I just forgot. <laughs> Duh. Anyway. Now I'm going to get myself ready to do my coloring. So what I want to do here is um, I want to, I'm looking for my um, media mat, my media grip. Um, I like to color on that versus coloring straight on my, um, my little pad thing. And what I'm getting out here are just some little brushes that I have. And um, I'm going to be using the smallest brushes. And I'm going to start out in the very center um, with overzealous. Now, um, you don't necessarily have to use the stencils with this, but it, it, it is helpful, um, you know, to just kind of keep your colors separated. Now I'm doing a lot of blending here, um, because remember I mentioned that the, um, Simon Hurley inks blend beautifully on the stark white cardstock, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and, um, Put down this first stencil so that I only have the center here and you can tape these down or not it just depends I feel like it's a small enough space I don't need to do that so I'm just kind of going around the center part with the overzealous I want to make this one really brightly colored I'm going to grab some Tropical Tango and do the very, very center. I didn't even clean my brush, not necessary. Um, but I want to. I want this to start and end in Tropical Tango, which is one of my favorite. You can't, they're all my favorite. I can't pick one. <laughs> so next I'm going to go in with the Shooting Star. And I'm going to try and put this little guy in place. But my ink is still a little wet. And it doesn't necessarily want to stick to that center, but we're going to give it a good old try. And then I'm going to lay the um, stencil on the outside so that I'm only coloring those parts. And for this, I am going to use a little bit of mint tape. Just to kind of hold it down. Mostly to keep me from making mistakes or accidentally lifting it, because I can do that. I can get rough with it sometimes. <laughs> So I'll go on with the shooting star and forget it. I'll just let it blend in with the overzealous. <laughs> no big deal. And just kind of get that little flower, that first or second, I guess, flowery part. This is such a pretty stamp. I, I fell in love with it. I told Simon, my hippie soul adores that stamp. So now I'm going in with Over the Moon, which is, a, yeah, here we go again, my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite in the yellows. Um, did I do Over the Moon? Yeah, and just got that, the uh, outside part of that. And now I'm going to go in with a um, Roar. And you notice how I'm just only coloring it halfway and then I'll blend it. So what I am making sure is that the one color blends nicely with the previous color. So I can kind of give it that softer look. Man, Simon, if you drew this, you have so much patience. <laughs> now I'm gonna go in with beasting. I'm gonna hit the tips of those flower petals. And if you notice there's some parts that don't get colored, that's because there's embossing powder there that I didn't see. So the embossing powder resists, whether it's 
over black or, you know, over just plain paper, it's going to resist. But it's not too bad. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to start over. If it was really, really bad, I probably would start over. All right, I'm going to remove that stencil and put down the next stencil. There we go. This is so easy, though. It just will make your life so easy. And I'm just going to fold my mint tape over the side there so it holds. All right. Now we're going to go in with Love Struck, which is a pinkier red. So I'm doing kind of a spectrum of colors here. And I do have this bit up. I felt like I didn't need to make you watch me color these slowly. So I have it sped up double time. That's as fast as my um, iPad software will do. One of these days I'll do this differently, but not today. <laughs> it's really looking gorgeous. Now I just wipe off my brush there on my uh, microfiber towel and I'm gonna go in now with Prom Queen, which is a bright, bright pink. Well, it's almost a magenta, almost. And just get these all colored in. Of course, as it gets bigger, it takes longer to color it. But still, so easy. <laughs> all right, we're down to our last guys here. And I don't necessarily need to do the outside stencil. And I'm, I'm not gonna do any more stencil because I don't care if I get it messed up. I know that the, um, what is this purple? I know that the crown me will blend nicely with the prom queen if I accidentally get some in there. So no big deal. And notice I'm still leaving space here. Because I still need to squeeze in two more colors. So now I am going to grab the clear skies. And then we'll finish off with Tropical Tango. Now I have all the Simon, I'm an ink junkie, okay? I'm pretty sure that I send all the Ranger kids to college. <laughs> because I have, well, never mind. Um, but if you, you know, if you're looking for a good collection of um, dye-based inks that are water reactive, then go for the Simon Hurley ink pads. They are awesome. And let's finish off here with the Tropical Tango. And again, I don't care if I'm getting sloppy because I'm gonna be cutting this, fussy cutting this out right to the edge. I'm an edge cutter. I, I know a lot of people like to have a white space. I'm, I'm an up to the edge kind of gal. Now, white spaces have their place, um, you know, particularly when you don't feel like die cutting <laughs> or you don't feel like uh, fussy cutting. All right, so off camera, I fussy cut that out because I didn't need to put you through that torture. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pen and I'm just going to go around the edges here because I'm going to be sticking this down to some super black paper so I don't want any white edges. Now the paper I'm gonna be using is also from Ranger. This is a uh, Tim Holtz product. It's the Black Heavy Stock, and I am in love with this paper. I mean, if you've never used it or touched it, it it's, it's like butter. It's just an amazing paper. Um, I'm having a hard time not hoarding it because it's not cheap, okay? But mm, it's so worth it because it is so black. And it's matte. Now, sometimes some black papers, and I'm I'm cutting this in quarters, by the way. Some black papers have a certain kind of shininess to them. And this is just completely flat and completely black. I'm not here to sell paper, but man, if you're looking for a good black paper, get this one from Ranger. Mm, 
yummy. <laughs> That's all I have to say for that. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and use a white card base. So I'm gonna glue this down to the white card base. I'm gonna trim it down a little bit and I'll use save and use those little strips for sentiments because yeah. Because <laughs> they're a quarter inch, right? So you there are plenty of tiny sentiments that'll fit on a quarter inch piece of paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and just glue this black piece down to the white card base. And I'm just using art glitter glue because it comes out of the bottle easy. <laughs> That's this is my my logic and thinking is I like things to be easy. Like I do love to use um, some other glues like the um, matte medium, but um, it's really hard for me to squeeze the bottle. So I'd like to have that conversation with Ranger at some point. <laughs> How can we get this to come out of the bottle easier? So I've got the stamp set from the um, Birthday Basics because I want to use the Celebrate word because I want this to be a birthday card. I've got a lot of birthdays in January, so <laughs> I'm thinking this timing on this was wonderful. And I also want to stamp the inside of the card. Now, I don't often do that, but I think it's important, particularly if you have the inside stamps. So the small sentiments work perfect for inside stamps. So I'm going to select one. Okay. And then I'll get out my stamping tool again, my stamping platform, because Lord knows I have a hard time and stamping something straight. So this is, um, I honestly, I would have never gotten into this hobby if I had not found out about stamping platforms. <laughs> I just wouldn't have done it because I would just get too frustrated that I couldn't get stuff straight. So I'm just gonna straighten that out in there, best that I'd kind of eyeball it, and then I'll lay it down on the stamp platform and check it to make sure that it's fairly even and then go ahead and use my VersaFine Claire to stamp down. Don't want to stamp too hard because I don't want to mush the letters but I want to stamp hard enough that I get the stamp down. And there we go. I'm happy with that. Yeah, not sure what I'm doing here. I'm looking for something. Yeah, I'm looking for a piece of paper. Oh, actually, I'm stamping this again. Okay, I'm not sure what I did there. That was crazy. I guess it didn't go all the way. Fine. <laughs> oh, I see. I put a. I had to find a pad to put in there. That's why it wasn't stamping all the way, because I had it set for the um, rubber stamp. And I couldn't find the mouse pad. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. And I put a piece of paper inside there so it doesn't smudge onto the next, um, smudge onto the other side of the card. We won't talk about the back sides of my cards. <laughs> okay, deal. Um, I do want to pop this up on some foam tape. And I'm going to put quite a bit because I want it to be well supported. And this is just some foam tape that I got probably on Amazon. I don't know. I really love this new release that Simon's put out. Um, all every time he does a new release, I like it better and better. It's you know he's got gotten real creative with you know really cool stuff like the. Um, <sighs> like this birthday set I mean at what point would you not use it some of the sentiments in there are perfect for any time um, and I show you in another video some fun stuff to do with the sprinkles so we'll go ahead and um, pull this backer off and we're getting pretty close to done 
but I'm going to embellish this because mm, I like sparkly, shiny things. You could use the lunar paste, too, to color this in with the stencil. If you do, I recommend that you leave it in the stamp platform and stamp over top of the lunar paste once it's dry. Um, maybe with some archival ink or stamp over it and then do heat emboss it. Because the lunar paste, you know, is not completely translucent. Um, if you do it really super, super thin, it is. But yeah, that's, so that's how I do it anyway. So I'm going to use the Celebrate. Love the love love the font on these stamps. I think it's terrific. And then I'm going to grab my stamp platform again and just move my card out of the way for a minute and grab a piece of black paper, one of the leftovers, and I'm just going to stamp this down towards the bottom. But I want to I want to leave enough room to cut cut the word out. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool because I'm going to be heat embossing that with some white embossing powder. So I'm using my little um, my little brush, my little rabbit hole designs brush um, for anti-static powder. I like it better than the bag one. The bag one puts it up, puts it down too heavy, I think. And so I've got some white, opaque fine white embossing powder from Ranger. And I'm going to grab one of my little hot dog holders here. <laughs> That's uh, one I learned watching Jennifer McGuire. I saw, saw those hot dog holders when she was using it. And I'm like, That's so perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and use Versamark ink. And just ink up the stamp and stamp it down. You can see it really well on this black paper. So you'll know if you got it. And one stamp was all it took. And then I'll go ahead and heat emboss this celebrate word. I'll make sure I get plenty of embossing powder on there and just tap off gently. Sometimes I'll also just blow on it. But I see a couple of spots that are pretty heavy that I don't want. And so I'm just using a, a soft brush to kind of brush them away carefully. <laughs> like I said, this paper is like gold to me, so I definitely don't want to waste any of it. And now I've got my heat tool heated up, and I'm going to go ahead and melt this embossing powder onto the celebrate word. So I bought this, I bought a black embossing tool on Amazon, and um, because you can see how dirty mine is because I'm always inky. And yeah, I've cleaned it, but it doesn't, you know, it gets ruined. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just get a black one. And I was so mad because I got it and the cord was two feet. What good is that? <laughs> I did. I, I did a um, review on Amazon because of it. Because it doesn't, it may say so, you know, and I may be just stupid and didn't read the specs. But I mean, come on, two feet. And it's really not safe to use extension cords. Um, this die, by the way, came from one of my Spellbinder sets. Um, I like to use it to cut out these larger sentiments because I know it gets them straight. <laughs> and Lord knows, I don't get much straight even if I try to cut it in my, you know, my... Um, my tonic trimmer. I still... It seems like sometimes if that trimmer pulls on the and and what I'm doing here is die cutting that out by the way seems like that trimmer pulls on the paper a little bit and ends up getting it crooked so I like to use a die wherever possible and I like how that came out so let's go ahead and finish putting this card together and I'm going to trim off just one portion of the celebrate just the end portion and I am using my trimmer but I feel safe using it <laughs> yeah I guess I'm gonna cut off both ends yeah don't cut off your C all right there we go now I'm gonna pop that celebrate up on some foam tape 
Let me see if I can find a better foam tape here. I don't necessarily want to use that one. It's too wide and I don't necessarily want to cut it down because it gums up your scissors, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I, You know what? I'm taking forever to do anything today. Um, even my voiceover and editing. I've just got a tiny bit of this left, but I'm going to use it. And I'll just use it with glue. I mean, there's no rule that says you can't glue down your foam tape. I use um, fun foam all the time. So I'll just kind of get it on there straight and then I'll grab my glue and glue it on. That way you can use the whole roll because I don't know why they they take, well, I do know why, but I kind of don't like it. And there we go. I'm just going to kind of put this where I want it. I'm not, um, I don't want it right smack in the middle. That's just not me. All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to embellish this thing with some diamonds. They're not real diamonds, but they look shiny and pretty and I'm going to put a lot of them on here and I'm not going to make you watch me put them all on here because that'd be crazy but I'm just going to put my glue down first and then grab my little picker tool here and I don't know if this has a brand name I'm sure I got it on Amazon apparently these things were made for actually decorating fingernails I don't know So I'm trying to grab the ones that are facing up rather than try to flip them over because they're so tiny. <laughs> they're so tiny. <laughs> All right, we'll do the rest of these off camera and be done with this card. So there we go. I've got my little shinies on here. We're ready to rock and roll with a birthday card with from Simon Hurley's new release, the Flowering Mandala and the Coordinating Dice, I mean the Coordinating Stencil Set and the... Um, Birthday Basics, which is going to be one of my all-time favorites here forever and ever. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And um, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please think about subscribing. Again, I'd like to thank Simon Hurley, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.